I just got back from the Sundance Film Festival where I actually had a very private screening of the new James Franco movie, I Am Michael. Now this is a true story about a gay activist who became Christian, denounced his homosexuality, and now has a wife and is a Christian pastor. So right after the screening, I was told that I could sit down and do an exclusive interview with Michael Glatz and his wife. I barely even had time to collect my thoughts. My head was running all over the place, but just check it out. We had to sit down. This is what happened. We're sitting here with Michael and Rebecca Glatz. We just had a screening of the film I Am Michael. Your reaction is still very present for you. Very much so. I um, just walked away from the movie right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> and that was your very first time seeing it? Very first time seeing it, and it's been years in the making. So, uh, How involved were you in the process? Well, from the very beginning, I was uh, asked whether I would be willing to take part in it and really had to consider if that was something I wanted to do. After not too long of consideration, I decided that yes, I did want to take part and uh, try to do the best I could and it actually turned out to be an incredible healing process. And how do you, how do you feel after watching it? It's a lot <laughs> so much of this story, but... Uh... I'm still trying to just process. I mean, I, I was excited about it and I'm glad it's definitely, it feels good to have watched it now. I saw at the end it was actually based on a book. Is that Benny's? It said Benoit. Benoit's a different person. That's okay. Yeah, but people Benoit, sometimes right. confuse yeah. that. Okay. There's two guys with Ben that are involved there, and Benoit is a friend. The actual guy was actually in a scene. Oh, really? Uh, next to James Franco meditating. And he came and did an interview of me several years back, or by now four years, I think, four or five years, which ended up as a New York Times magazine piece, which Gus Van Sant and James Franco um, read and decided to go from that piece into a movie. Wow. This whole movie kind of closes a circle from sort of strident dogma, strident dogma, strident dogma. <laughs> but you look and like you say, there is a through line of some sort of just be yourself mm -hmm. commonality throughout all of those different viewpoints, all those different hats, so mm -hmm. to speak, is this sense of, you know what, I think we can resonate with this call that, you know, being yourself is actually something that is a very, very fundamentally important human thing. And the subculture you'd said, <laughs> you don't necessarily need to identify in that as well, which yeah. was great, because there was so much of that, I think, in the beginning of the movie, of mm -hmm. identifying in so much of the subculture of the queer community. Well, that was, and the, then, that was the struggle that we were facing back then, was that, you know, trying to be yourself, but also knowing that it was a certain time in history where there, there was a real need for a political identification, even on a, I guess, a much more distinct, you know, line by line way than even today, I think, in some mm -hmm. ways. Well, I'd love to hear what you think about exactly how the movie came across with your story, because uh, we had just said, I love how you had Emma Roberts and uh, James Franco, like two of the hottest stars. Yeah. I'm boy. a huge fan of both, and yeah. I was waiting for you to come into the story, and I'm like, here, so <laughs> I'm so happy to see that yeah. story. Well, I mean, for one thing, she's definitely more beautiful and just like Emma, Emma Roberts than I am like James Franco. So that's one thing to put clear out there like that. It was a, it was a lot of fun to the, watch those actors and just to see them, to just feel the, I guess, connection. What do you think? I mean, Even before watching the movie, looking at all the pictures and seeing the connections between the actors, that was really exciting leading up to this. And then now, having seen the movie, from where the movie left off, you had said uh, the way that it ended and in the ending, what, what is next? So I'm trying to kind of reconnect there in my heart. Um, you can see there's a coldness. I, I think James does a really brilliant job of, of this, that, that time when I'm sort of sitting there with Tyler. And I can remember that time and just fear gripping me but not wanting to be afraid. And I think over time and, and you know, now we're married now and just over and our relationship has become just more real and more more human. And as we've become more human, then I've been able to kind of rejoin humanity in a lot of ways because I was so cold for a while, really harsh and it was a really hard time and trying to people say, well, you know, you need to kind of stand out for these rights and this right and this and I'm like, this is not kind of my thing and, and just feeling a, just not that's not me. So the one fruit of all this is that the Bennett character, it's not his real name in real life, okay. um, but we've, I mean, all three of us were hanging out last weekend. I mean, what a picture of just something kind of grace or, or God or whatever you want to call it, just kind of saying, well, look, these are people more than anything else. Mm -hmm. and let's kind of come together and get away from some of this activistic kind of mentality and just connect as people. Was that we, the first time you had met? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, and she's like, I love you, and he's like, I love you. And it was like, lo it was a love fest. Actually, his mom just uh, recently passed away from breast cancer as well, just like my mom. Wow. And we were crying, and we shared one thing, which was that we kind of felt 
a commonality about the dogmatism of the of the um, Christian school that we had gone to, and just that sort of that comes forth in the movie where the guy's like, you know, you gotta you gotta embrace fear, and, and that was something that, you know, I'm not an expert on life, but at that point in time, I was just like, I don't want to embrace fear. Yeah. I just I'm already being so slammed by fear in my own sort of self-identification journey, trying to ask and these in questions. every community, I'm sure. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah, and we'd already seen so many of these kids, like, pounded by fear, like, I'm not going to do that. That's, that's not, I don't care if you think that's God's will, but, you know, I'm sure there's someone out there that believes otherwise and still believes God is out there, and you mm -hmm. don't have to embrace fear. From that point, we've been finding common ground, meeting people like you guys, and it's just like life is starting up again. It's almost like a new life, and I thank James Franco for that. I did. I, I sent, sent an email for him, and yeah, I said, thank wow. you so much for your interest in this, this project, because it has been the spark to a gigantic healing process for so many people in my world, and, and then now we can rejoin the rest of the world, you know, which is the, really cool. In the film, we see a lot of the trying to find you know, your true self, and in the process of that, you're a writer. Yeah. So, you know, we see you writing blogs, and we see you writing blogs as a gay rights activist, mm -hmm. and then there's a person in this transition, and we see some of the, you know, that came out of the Christian media and everything about, oh, wow, we've won someone over. Yeah, yeah. And some of your own blogs about that kind of stuff, yeah. too. Have you thought about going back now and doing some blog writing and doing some writing about the very contradictory, contradictory things that... Um, we're out in your blogs before. Yeah, for sure. I think first off, one of the most important things for us right now is to be very slow and very deliberate and very patient and just be very careful because mm -hmm. part of the mentality that sort of drives and has driven me in the past and drives some is to kind of be very quick to react and then put a very strong mm -hmm. viewpoint out there, you know, and kind of have that certitude. And, and I think James plays that kind of very well in terms of, I'm so certain right now, I'm gonna write, to the, tell the whole world right now. <laughs> and then five seconds later, you're telling the whole world something exactly the opposite of what you said <laughs> uh -huh. just a few days before. Yeah. And so we're very willing and we're very open to being in communication and dialogue about a variety of these things, but very careful about that as well. We wanna be very careful about it because we don't wanna be starting another fight. Yeah, and during those years you had quite a following with gay youth. You did a documentary about gay youth, you mm -hmm. did meetups at college campuses, toured the nation, and a lot of those folks have, you know, come forward during your transitional period and, and said that they were hurt a little bit by yeah. some of the things that you said. What yeah. do you say to those people today? Well, I'm sorry, and that's one of the things that, you know, I would say to um, anyone that has been hurt by any of the words uh, that have come either through my mouth or also uh, typed out on a computer screen, mm -hmm. kind of like Franco does there so well. And even through video, because we did do the Jim and Bold film, is, you know, I'm sorry for any of the pain that I've caused. I literally feel that and have been dealing with that over the past, really three or four years especially. It has just been a lot of process of healing for me. We've been really going through that together and just growing in what the Buddhist uh, teacher kind of observed that was missing Mm -hmm. in me at that time mm -hmm. was compassion. I mean, it was at that time where I had a Buddhist teacher tell me, you know, Michael, you seem to have a barrier to compassion. And you can see that barrier in Franco's mm -hmm. eyes in some of those scenes. And it's being in a sort of a self-help kind of time of letting that barrier come down so that we can begin to reconnect on a more heart-to-heart, -heart, honest level and, and really start to, if there's amends that need to be made, make those amends and yet not offend anyone as much as possible on either side. And that's, we got to be very careful with that. We really appreciate having you guys uh, come down and talk to us. Thank all you right. so much. We know you're very busy Thank this you. week. Thank you. And uh, all the best of luck on the premiere. That's this Thursday? Yeah, yeah we won't be here, but okay. we're excited about it. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that was my interview with Michael and his wife. So what did you think? The movie itself was politely ambiguous. It doesn't really have a point of view one way or the other. I mean, half of it was really, really gay. I mean, so gay, it was like, I was like, oh my God. And half of it, I think the Christian fundamentalists would love. Now, the moral of Michael's story is that all you really have to do is just sort of pray away the gay. I didn't choose to be gay. I chose to come out and celebrate my homosexuality. Now, a very interesting quote from his new life. I don't see people as gay anymore. God creates us heterosexual. We may get other ideas in our head about who we are, and I certainly did, but that doesn't mean they're the truth. So the movie released today at Sundance, and we'd love to hear what you guys think about it. Post a comment below, start the discussion, keep it going. So who's gonna like it more? The gay activists or Christian fundamentalists? Are they both gonna watch it? Are not? Are them gonna watch it? I don't know. Leave a comment below.